Fisherman, how's it going? I'm still down at Swanage in our caravan down at Dorset. Um, I want to do a little tackle list because it's something I didn't really know at all about what to do or what to get uh, for this style of fishing. Or I, I thought it was totally different to what it is. Um, so basically, I want to talk about float fishing for the sea. So coastal. So this method is mainly used off like breakwaters, piers. Uh, on the rocks, that sort of stuff. If you're going to start this sort of fishing, go on a pier because it's it's safer. There's people about that sort of thing. They have bought their life uh, rings and stuff like that. Go with someone who's been before, or go with people. So you're not your, and tell people what you're doing because obviously if you're going on, don't go on rocks for your first time because people die from that sort of fishing. I don't want to be negative, but I just want to say that, and I don't want to recommend doing things you shouldn't be doing. First of all, but this, if you're going to go float fishing, start off with a pier. It's good fun. Around the pillars of the pier, rafts and that can be caught. You can target, um, we've been catching garfish on this method. Um, but you can catch bass, pollock, uh, wrasse, pretty much anything. I've even caught flatfish off this when I first started doing this when I was about 14. Um, down in a place called West Bay. Um, but yeah, no, I just want to do a little tackle list on the best ways I've found to do this. It's light tackle, it's good fun. So let's get down, we'll start off with the rod. Okay, again, not sponsored by any of these people. I just like using what I use, this is what I've got for my budget. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna start off with the rod. I use a, I think this is a six foot, seven foot spinning rod. Um, I also use my Shakespeare LRF rod for this because it's really light. I actually cut down the tip so it's slightly more sturdier because I broke the tip and I cut it down to make it six foot instead of seven. And it's a bit more sturdier for float fishing. So I use a spinning rod. You probably use a full rod for this, but I use a spinning rod. I just find it it's good fun, it's light. Um, make it a nice stiff rod, um, nice foam handle, makes it perfect for casting these small, small floats, that sort of thing. You obviously upgrade it bigger if you're using bigger floats, but I just use small ones off the piers and stuff. But yeah, just a nice small six foot rod, spinning rod, nice strong tip to cope with any sort of like bigger fish which might come about and obviously if you're on rocks you need that power just to put give a bit of stick so that's the rod i use this is a six foot mitchell gt pro i picked up for about 20 quid at the local tag shop as a basic starter kit so there you go that's the rod i use let's go on to the reel Right, so the reel I use is this little guy. This is a Mitchell GTP 20RD. It's a cheap reel. It's not the best of reels, I will be honest with you. It's got a quite a sticky uh, drag on it, but it's a one bearing, so yeah, you can imagine. And I've got this whole kit for 20 quid, so you can imagine what it's like. It's not that great. Um, I use a fixed ball. I think that's the best way to go. I've not really seen people use multipliers for float. This is, I think, a 2000 size. I think that's perfect. Um, and it holds the line which is 10 pound line on it mono and that's perfect for what you're doing and it's a rear drag system um, fixed ball I mean, that's just perfect for what I do I could probably like to upgrade it a little bit because the drag but that's worked all this week and I've caught plenty of garn bass off it this week so that's the reel I use 2000 size just to cope with because you're casting quite frequently and enough to hold a nice amount of 10 pound line on it Let's get on to the rest of the gear. Right guys, so we're getting on to the interesting parts now. So you wanna, this interest part, you can, you can do whatever you want on this section. So I've got the little thin pencil slider. So this is a sliding float. Some of these come in big polystyrene clunky things. I use the, the slender pencil style ones. These are like pike floats. I'm actually gonna keep these for pike fishing. Um, I'll just show you the other ones I've got with me. So I've got the slender little pencil floats and I've got the big, bigger ones. I use this for like, mainly for like pike fishing, but you can use these perfect for sliding float. Like a bigger bait, so a bit of squid or a whole, like I use a whole sander on that and a whole rag. A bit of squid, a bit of mackerel on that one, big chance for bigger fish. And if you like to fish the bottom, I've used these for fishing on the bottom, that one in the top water. I just, Find better personal preference. Personal, it might be the same. Obviously, casting further as well, close in and lighter. So the floats. Let's get on to other stuff now, like the terminal tackle and 
beads and stuff. Right, so with this little rig here, look how messy them knots are. People will be cringing. So basically this little rig here is a sliding float, goes to a stop knot. So the first thing you're going to need is some, other than the float what we just talked about, this lighting is amazing by the way, is um, some beads. These basically act as buffers, so when the baits slam against the swivels and the, and the weights, and then to cushion against the stop knots, so it don't over go over the float and it don't cock itself basically. So beads are a, main, a must you must get. Smaller the better I'll find unless you've got quite a big hold float. So sort of medium, I think they're medium gauge I think. Um, any colour's fine. Some people use sequins on their hooks so bright is probably better as well. Um, these little bullet weights as well, don't know if you can see that because the lighting's amazing. Um, bullet weights which are inline weights. Um, I actually, they're actually I think 9 over 10s or 9 over 11s. I've got some bigger ones for the bigger weights. These are 11 over 16s. There you go. Just big, they're like just full bearings with holes through the middle. They'll cock your float for you. Obviously if you're using a big bait, don't use the weight. Let the bait cock it for you. And then there amongst all the messy knots, because that's amazing knot tying, uh, barrel swivel. And that just acts as a stop as well, so you can attach your hook length onto there. So um, let's go have a look at the hook, what I use now. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I do. I will do a list at the a full list at the end, hopefully, so you know exactly what you're getting. Um, just sort of talk about hook lengths at the moment. So just like coarse fishing, use a lower diameter. Because I didn't do that at first when I first started doing this, and I... When I was snapping off, I was losing all my gear, and that's costly. So um, I use a two foot, two foot hook length of mono. This one's eight pound to ten pound main. Just that tiny little bit, so you still can give the stick. But um, if it does get caught on a rock or anything, you're not going to lose all your floating weights as well. Um, I use, I think this one is a size four long shank. I lose your, use long shanks because I like to thread the rags all the way up and then I also like to thread the sandals over as well so or I like to tail hook and stuff like that. Long shank just seems to be better. If you can get the ones the worm hooks, the little barbs on the shank, they're excellent. They don't they don't allow the worms to slide back down as well. But that's what I use long shank. You can use bigger, bigger baits, smaller for small baits, depending on what you go. But that that's caught me gar bass rass all this week, so that's what I use. And I've just done a little uh, blood knot there, I don't know if you can see that, onto that. And then that's just tied with a blood knot onto the swivel as well. And it's obviously barbed, because we're using worm baits and stuff like that. Um, and I tend to use barbed for sea fishing anyway, because a lot of the stuff, like mackerel, obviously you're catching your dinner. Alright, so that's the basic tackle. You can change... To what you want to do on this like if something's not right but that's just a basic list of what you can use and i might do a i will probably do a video on how to tie one of these rigs because it's i'm going to be tying these rigs for when i go pike fishing as it's getting close to october it will be october by the weekend and that is pike season for me so i'm going to do a lot of dead baiting and live baiting um for pike so i hope you like that i'll, st I'll do a list at the end so you can probably see what it's for, and I'll see you on the bank sometime.